Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today I'm going to fill out the battleground map uh, here for the 2020 election. As it stands today, as it stands right now, what is the election map looking like in terms of a battleground, and what are Trump's chances to win re-election, and right now I'll say pretty good, but I'll, fill, I'll start to fill in the map right now. This is just Trump versus a generic Democrat. Now, um, here we go. We'll start on the West Coast. I believe Trump will take the state of Alaska safe. And since right now I think that there's a higher than 50% chance Tulsi runs, and if she runs, she's taking her home state, I think we'll give Hawaii to Tulsi. Now, as for the Democrats, Cali and Washington, as of right now, safe blue. Now, this could change in Washington, especially California, obviously. It could get closer, but I don't think that it's going to change. But as of right now, I think it's safe to put these in the safe column. But Oregon, we have to put in the likely column. Trump just has to move the margin in the state 1.1% to um, turn Oregon from a safe state to a likely state. And I believe that he has the money and resources this time around to do so. So for that purpose alone, Oregon is in the likely column. Now, as for Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, the Dakotas, everything in Nebraska except the second district, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, T Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, and Missouri, as well as South Carolina, they are all safe in my opinion. Now for the Democrats, we can also fill out Illinois, New York, uh, and all of these states down here in the safe column. So now we can start to fill out the total battleground for this entire map, and I'll be giving my rundown, my usual analysis for this map, and, and we'll, we'll see how it's going to be shaped, how the map will shape up as we start with Nevada. Now, I'm going to leave Nevada as a pure toss-up. Trump's approval rating there in the midterms was 48%. It's very possible, especially if you do have Tulsi running as a third party, that Nevada will stay in the toss-up column or possibly go to Donald Trump. It's not the fact that he has to gain so many voters. It's a, what voters are the Democrats going to lose in Clark County and how, if he's going to be able to pick some of them up. And if he gets 48% in these state, Democrats can lose some voters. They could vote for Tulsi if she runs. They could vote for another third party. They could check the none of these candidates box. And in that case, Nevada will go to Donald Trump. So it's very possible that it goes to Trump. Trump could flip the state. Right now, it's staying in the toss-up column. Now, as for Colorado, I think unless Trump legalizes weed, I think he'd be favored there. I think it's safe to put it in the lean Democrat. Now, it's possible Sanders could actually, or a progressive, could actually energize the people in Colorado, especially the white people that live in places like Denver. And you're not going to see the same thing happen throughout the country, even with throughout the state of Colorado, like in the suburbs. And whatever they gain, they're going to lose in the suburbs. It's probably going to be roughly around a five-point win again for the Democrats right now as it stands today. And in New Mexico is another state that I think is going to be a little bit closer. Trump's probably going to do a little bit better with Latino voters and probably get a little bit more of the Gary vote than the Democrats. And I'm sure a lot of the Gary vote will vote third party or stay home or whatever they have to do in 2020, especially if it's Biden. But other than that, I think New Mexico is a likely Democrat state as of right now against a generic, uh, decently generic Democrat. As for the state of Arizona, this is a state that I believe is going to be a tilt Trump state to a lean Trump state. I think I'm going to put it in the lean Trump category right now, which means he'd win it by over two. I think it'll be like two to three points. It's a state that will trend, but I think Trump is the money and resources again, the, the upper edge on fundraising. He'll be able to get out the vote in a place like Arizona, and he will be able to do well enough there for him to go out there and potentially win the state by a decent size margin. But as of right now, we'll put it in the lean column as Maricopa County grows bigger from people moving in from all over the country as well as all over the world. They're going to start to see things change a little bit, at least for this election cycle. And I think Arizona will be turning into the lean R column for that matter alone. But in the state of Texas, you know, uh, but there was a CNN analyst that was always on uh, CNN. I uh, believe his last name is Lozano. He's always talking about the state trending blue. I don't see it happening this time around. I think Trump is going to do well enough in places like East Texas and, and uh, whatever it is to be able to bring home the state into Donald Trump's column by around 5 to 7 percentage points. 
I think a lot of the, um, I think Trump will do a little bit better among Latino voters. And I think that the suburban votes really won't be changed. And there were a lot of third party votes. And I think a lot of those third party voters, if you look at the CNN exit polls, showed that they would come home to Donald Trump. He would have won the state by 12 or 13 without him. So I think people are looking at one bad midterm and reading too much into it in the county swings and, and whatnot's been going on in the state. So either way, I think that Texas is going to go to Trump by a decent margin. It won't be nine points, but it won't be like two points. Points either. So I think it's going to go to Trump by around, I guess you would say five to seven points. Georgia, on the other hand, I think it will get a little bit closer. The Atlanta suburbs are growing really too fast. And I'm honestly more worried about Georgia and future elections than Texas, just based off that fact alone. So Georgia, I think, will be in the lean column, as well as Florida. Democrats, with their far left turn, are alienating a lot of voters, especially Cuban voters in places like Miami Dade. Uh, in, in, in the I-4 corridor, and Trump's even getting more popular in the panhandle and has a lot of enthusiasm throughout the state. And uh, Florida is a state that I believe will trend in Trump's column. They have voted for every incumbent since 1980. And uh, for that matter alone, I believe Florida will stay with Donald Trump. But in the state of North Carolina, I think that North Carolina will also actually stay in the Lean R column. We're going to be watching. I'll actually do a live stream September 10th, I believe it is, when we get the results from North Carolina's 9th district, which was the dead even district in a state where Donald Trump, or not Donald Trump, but the Republican Party actually won the House popular vote for the midterms, which is not the best indicator for how a state will vote in 2020, but it shows that Republicans, even in a year where they really didn't have a race to turn out for and Democrats were energized, they still outnumbered the Democrats. So, uh, we're definitely going to have to keep watch of North Carolina. Apparently, health care is a very big issue there. I, I've ever talked to all kinds of people from North Carolina. All of, all they want to talk about is health care. And, and uh, it seems like the de- they were really anti-Trump uh, at first. But, like, the Democrats have moved so far left trying to get rid of private insurance. They're flip-flopping. So for that fact alone, especially a lot of veteran presence there in North Carolina. And, and it's going to stay red. And another state with high veteran presence, though, that probably won't is Virginia. Virginia is a state that right now I will put in the, I I guess I will put it in the lean column. It's possible Trump flips it with Sanders. If it's with Biden, it could be in the lean or the likely blue. But then again, Biden will probably have his own set of gaffes and he'll probably do even worse than the others when it's all said and done. Well, we're going to have to see. But as of right now, what we're going off of the data now, it it seems like Virginia is going to go to the Democrats by around four to five, probably in that range. And that's going to automatically Put that in the lean blue column, but we'll have to keep watch of that state. As for Nebraska's second district, it did go red in the midterms, and I, I, I don't think it's trending red, but I think that it will go for Trump by a similar margin to what it did last time around. As for Minnesota, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, I believe Trump will win Pennsylvania and possibly Michigan and Minnesota, but uh, as we're not doing leans or t- we're not doing tilts here. And uh, as for toss ups, I believe those are complete toss up states for right now. Um, if I had to pick a state of those that would be for sure for the Republicans, it probably would be Pennsylvania. Yeah, people are going to comment in my comment section. Oh, look at this poll. Look at this poll. Look at this poll. Again, early polls are seriously, guys. They literally mean nothing so far. In about a year from now, we can start incorporating the polls. But right now, we have to go along with trends and and stuff like the midterm results and the exit polls from the midterm, seeing where the energy is at the moment and possibly where it's going to be headed to 2020. So uh, it seems like usually the Democrats peaked in the midterms are seeing a, a little bit of a reversal now where they are, lo- are are going to end up losing their energy as their party is get becoming divided. So for that fact alone, I believe Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Minnesota, w- too little data to, to go off of to say it's going to lean either way. It's probably those states are all going to be decided by under two percentage points. But I think Wisconsin is a state that's going to lean in Trump's column just based off of how non-maxed out he is in the rural areas and how I believe those rural areas will finally come home. I'm telling you, white uh, rural areas, the liberals in those areas, they're they're starting to die out. They've almost completely died out of the Midwest, and the next target is going to be up here in the Northeast in 2024 and beyond. And while I'll do some 2024 analysis, uh, I got a video coming out about what Republicans I want to run in 2024. Uh, we'll do a video on that. But uh, as for the continuing the trends here, Ohio, likely if not safe. Iowa, probably likely. Trump might lose a couple points because of tariffs, but we don't know what's going to be like in 2020. 
but as a result right now, I think it's safe to put those in the likely column for Donald Trump. As with Maine's second district, I'd like to call it safe, and the Republican governor did win it. The Republican won it before the ranked choice voting. So again, in Maine's second district is, is, is definitely uh, Trump is probably going to hold it. Maine at large in New Hampshire, again, going to call them toss-ups. Maine's first district, though, safe blue. And that is the final map. And if you really insist Tulsi's not running, which is kind of something I kind of want to happen, I'll admit I'm a little biased toward the pro- prospect of it happening. Uh, we'll give Hawaii to the Democrats, and that would be 270 to 210. But then 270, Republicans already got 270. Trump got 270. 270 is the magic number. 270 will get you the presidency. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Please like this video. Please comment down below what you think, and please hit that big red subscribe button. Let's get to 10,000. We're at 9133 as I'm recording this video. We've gained so much. Please subscribe. Let's get to 10K. Um, Let's get me that bronze play button that really doesn't exist but should exist. Uh, But, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.